All right, guys, so you just finished your test, and we have to continue to be quiet for the other star testing. So we are going to go ahead and start taking notes on the very last and final thing that new I have to teach you in eighth grade, which is going to be um, global currents and weather. Okay, so I need y'all to take some flip video notes for me. I know it's been a really long time since I've had y'all do that, so you really can't complain. So go ahead and draw that uh, off slanted eye on your paper. If I tell you to write it down, I need you to expect you to because I am constantly going to be walking around you right now. So I need you to take very good, detailed um, C notes because we're going to go very fast through this last section so we can start reviewing for the star. So let's talk about our science, the global picture of air currents. Well, we know after going over through plate tectonics what convection is. Convection also occurs within the atmosphere and the oceans on Earth, and unlike the mantle, it is driven by the sun. So I definitely need you to write that down. Now we talked about inside the Earth's core because the core was hotter. Uh, when things heat up, they rise, and when they cool off, they sink. That circular motion of heat transfer, that's convection. And it's the exact same thing we're talking about, but now instead of being inside the Earth, we're going to go onto the Earth's surface. So where does all heat and energy on the Earth's surface come from? It comes from the sun. So the sun is the main driving force that causes convection on Earth. The sun heats up the water and the land and the land and water heat up the air. And this uneven heating is what allows us to have ocean currents and wind. So look at this picture that I'm showing you below. As the sun hits the earth, we know it hits it at different angles. We learned that in seasons. Sometimes it can hit the equator very direct, like at a 90 degree angle. And then sometimes it can hit it at a more obtuse angle so it's not going to be absorbing as much. So areas of the air that heat up, when that air heats up, it's going to rise to the top of the atmosphere. Once it's up to the top of the atmosphere, it's going to cool off again, and it's going to sink back down to the Earth's surface, then heat back up from the Earth's rays where it's penetrating the most, and continue to rise, creating these little convection cells all around the Earth and the atmosphere. This is why we have wind and weather. So let's talk about weather patterns. There is a constant flow of water and air around the earth and this flow distributes heat. Changes in weather patterns occur as the earth is trying to equalize the temperature. Now we tend to think about the equator being the warmest place on earth because it receives the most direct sunlight, which is true, and the coldest places on earth are the north and south pole because they receive the least amount of direct sunlight. Well, the Earth doesn't like to be uneven. It's trying to distribute the heat. It's trying to equalize it. And so it does this through convection. If you look at this um, thermo map of the Earth, you can see that around the equator where it's red and yellow, it is very hot. And as we move closer to the North Pole and to the South Pole, it does cool off and get colder, showing that the heat is moving to those colder areas. This is what causes wind currents and ocean currents. So why is it trying to equalize the temperature? The earth is heated unequally due to the tilted axis. So definitely write this down in red. Go ahead and pause the video and write this down. The earth is heated unequally due to the tilted axis. Now if you look at the picture on the right, this is showing you ocean currents. The blue obviously represents the colder currents and the warm represent the red. Now, they also flow in a circular motion, but if you'll notice, in the northern hemisphere, they all tend to go clockwise, like this, in this direction too. In the southern hemisphere, however, they go counterclockwise. That actually has to deal with the Coriolis effect, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So let's pretend we know the equator is the hottest place on Earth. So when the water heats up, it's going to rise to the surface of the ocean. This is what we call surface currents. Now, because it's warmer, it's going to try to carry that heat away from the equator, so it's going to start to head south in the southern hemisphere, 
and north in the northern hemisphere. Now that it gets up here to the northern and down here to the southern regions, it's going to start to cool off. Cold water sinks, so it sinks back down to the bottom of the ocean, where now it's going to travel back to the equator to warm up. And this process is going to continue all of our ocean currents and all of our um, gyres. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever been to California, but if you've ever been in the Pacific Ocean and went swimming off the coast of California, it is extremely cold. Many people in like San Francisco don't even have air conditioning in the summer because it doesn't get above 75, but it's a sunny state. So how does that happen? The reason is because all along the uh, West Coast is a cold ocean current that is returning to the equator to heat up. And so because the water is so cold, it helps to cool off the air. If you go swimming in the Gulf Coast near us or the East Coast, it is actually warmer to swim up here in New York on Long Island than it is in Los Angeles because a warm ocean current is going up to the North Pole to distribute the heat. So the Earth is um, in a constant battle to equalize the temperatures, but it never succeeds because our planet is always going to be hotter in some places than, than the other. And we know this unequal heating is due to the Earth's tilt but different places are receiving different amounts of sunlight because the earth is revolving, hence where we get our seasons from. So let's talk about the heating of the earth. Since the sun heats the equator more directly than the poles, warm air and water will flow away from the equator and cold air and water will flow towards the equator. So go ahead and pause the video and I want you to write this whole thing down. And then if you want to do a very rough picture, but I want you to show that warm air is moving towards the north and towards the south pole and cold air is always returning to the equator. In the northern hemisphere we go clockwise, in the southern hemisphere we go counterclockwise. So go ahead and pause the video and do that now. So let's go into the uh, wind patterns. The Earth's air is always moving from one area to another. Cold air sinks because it is more dense and warm air rises because it is less dense. So when we look at here and we look at the convection current in an air cell, when air heats up, it's going to rise because it becomes less dense and expands. Now that it's here far away from the intensity of the sun, it actually cools off, causing it to sink because it condenses and moves in together, and then the process just continues itself. This is what happens in a convection current or cell. So wind carries heat north on the Earth's equator and also carries colder air south towards the uh, equator. Earth is always trying to equalize that heat. So just kind of the way I talked about in the ocean currents, the exact same thing is happening in the air. But we call these different types of winds. We have our westerlies, which always move from the um, southwest to the northeast. You'll notice this is where we live on the Earth, so our storms always tend to come from the west because of the westerly winds. You have the uh, trade winds, which move the exact opposite direction towards the equator. And then in the uh, polar easterlies, they move the exact opposite. So if you'll look at this picture of the arrows. In fact, I need you to go ahead and draw this whole thing um, to show the arrows because I have actually seen a star question where they actually make you put in the correct arrow. So the polar easterlies go towards the um, southwest. The westerlies where we live go towards the northeast. The trade winds in the north go towards the southwest. And then everything's going to be opposite in the southern hemisphere. The trade winds go to the northwest. The westerlies in the southern hemisphere are going to go to the southeast. And the polars are going to go to the northwest. Um, so go ahead and draw, uh, draw that picture. So we already did a convection demo in class, how you could see how things heat up when they um, are warm and cool when they sink. When I see y'all again on Wednesday, I will actually do another demo where I will have an ice cube for cold and then warm water for uh, red for hot. 
So the next few slides are going to be examples of how the earth is trying to equalize heat through wind patterns. So here we go. We know we have wind because the earth is heated unequally. Well, wind is formed from large masses of air that we have different types. We have continental Arctic, maritime polar, maritime tropical, continental tropical. These are all air masses that move in particular directions, and the names kind of describe what they are. So let's go into the prevailing wind patterns. Okay, and you're definitely going to have to draw this in your notes. This is why we have deserts and rainforest. Okay, we know the equator gets the most direct sunlight, causing the air at the equator to heat up and rise. Well, now that it heats up and rise, what does it do? It's going to evaporate and cause rain. The remaining is then going to spread the heat out where it is starting to cool off and the cold air sinks. And this happens right about 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north latitude. And this happens to be where all the deserts in the world are located at either 30 degrees north or 30 degrees south. And the reason is all the air is so dry because at the equator it gets the most rain because that's where the heat and the hot air evaporates and the water in it condenses and turns into rain. Then the air is going to move through unequal heating where again the air is going to heat up and rise creating rain and then spread out and sink. So notice we have a convection cell, convection cell, convection cell all the way through. We have a lot of tropical at the equator and tropical around the 60 and 60 degrees south. Okay. So let's go into ocean currents. Oceans hold more heat energy than the atmosphere. Water can always hold more heat energy than air. Think about it, it can drop 10 to 20 degrees outside while we're in class, but it takes a lot more time for water to get cold or hot. During the summer, if it dropped to 50 degrees, the water still would be warm. And even though it can get up to 80 degrees in the summer, you still can't go swimming outside because the water would be very cold. That is called specific heat. Because of this influence, the climate on land and many ways. So water in the oceans determine the type of weather that we have. Uh, surface ocean currents are caused by uh, surface wind patterns, and like I mentioned earlier, if they are surface ocean currents, they are going to be warm because they are less dense and they rise. Water warmed at the equator is going to move towards the poles. Warm water is going to flow away from the equator, and cold water is going to flow towards the equator. So go ahead and take a minute and pause the video and write that down. So I want you to color all the warm currents red and all the cool currents blue on this map. And if you drew it earlier, then you do not have to do it again, but I want to see a very rough sketch of the circular motion of the currents. Okay, so notice the Gulf Stream that comes by us, it's warm. The California current that goes down is very cold. If we were to take this warm current, look how it goes all the way up here to uh, Greenland and England and Scotland and Norwegia. Like it's a very warm current compared to the cold current that's coming down here on the west coast of Africa. So ocean water and currents can be affect the climate. It takes more energy to change the temperature of water than land and air. So therefore water warms up and cools off much more slowly than land in the atmosphere. So if we look right here Here's Storway up in um, Scotland. And here is another city up in Canada. If I was to compare the temperatures, notice because this happens to be near a cold current, it's going to have very different temperatures. Where near London that happens to be an island and surrounded by water isn't going to change as much. So let's talk about the Gulf uh, Stream Current. The Gulf Stream Current is a very strong, fast-moving, warm current that starts in the Gulf of Mexico and moves up through the Atlantic Ocean. 
Because it brings warm temperatures with it, the Gulf Stream current makes England's climate much warmer than it would be without it. The climate near the coastline will be changed by the ocean. So people that live on the coast, their temperature is going to be a lot more regulated than people that live inland, like us. We can have very cold days and very warm days. We're more extreme because we're farther away from the water. So it will not heat up as much in the summer, and it will not cool down as far in the winter if you happen to live near the coastline. Again, because water has such a high specific heat. So let's look at local ocean effects. Sea breezes. This is one of those things that's so important I need you to copy it down. Okay, during the day, what's going to heat up faster, the land or the water? The land does. So because the land heats up faster, air is going to rise up, move out over the ocean. Now it's over a cooler body of water, so the air above it is going to start to cool, sink down, and return in. So when this happens during the day, land heats up faster than the ocean. And what that means is that you could go to any beach in the entire world, from Alaska all the way to Hawaii, and during the day, the wind is always going to blow from the ocean. That's why it's called a sea breeze. At night, however, everything's different. The water is going to be warmer than the land because it has that higher specific heat. So the air is going to heat up and rise, move over the land where now it's cooler, causing it to sink. So at night, if you were standing on the same beach, that's why the wind changes. Now they're called land breezes because the wind comes from the land. And if you've ever noticed when you've been at the ocean or at the beach, it is always windy. And the reason why it is always windy, except a few times twice a day, is because of that unequal heating between water and land. And that's why the coast is always so much cooler, is because of the convection that goes on there. So land breezes and sea breezes occur because of the difference in the specific heat of the land and water. And the differences are created is called a convection current. Okay. So what effects can warm water have moving into an area? We will get into this activity later. So if you need to go back and pause the video or rewind, I know it was really long, but you had to be quiet today anyway. Take really good. So I want to see the difference between sea breezes and land breezes, convection in the ocean and the water. I want to see lots of pictures, and you probably should have about a good three or four pages of notes. Okay? So when you're done, raise your hand, and I'll come check them.